The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. For over 10 years, ESPN has been proud to present the award-winning sports figures, and we want to thank all the athletes who have donated their time to help put your brain in the game. In 1997, the WNBA had just started, and our Greg Abbey was there with Monarchs player Pam McGee in this sports figures classic. I'm here with Pamela McGee of the WNBA Sacramento Monarchs. Pamela, a whole new team, a whole new league. How's everything going so far? Well, pretty good. It's a great season. The team's really pulling together. Great, great to hear. So are you, uh, you having any big problems so far? Matter of fact, I am. These balls. Yeah? I think they're defective. You, there's something wrong with the basketballs? Yeah, this one bounces this high. Okay, okay. But this one, yeah? it only bounces this high. Hmm, that's strange. Now try it. You, try me? it. Oh, here, could you hold this? Sure. Okay, yeah, that's, that one seems okay, actually. Now try this one. Okay, let me try this one. Oh, yeah, that one's, de that's a little different. That's different. Now yeah. try this one. You got a third one? Okay, let's try it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely different. Let me see. Do the Chicago Bulls have this problem? Sports figures put your brain in the game. There's two kinds of air in basketball, right? There's this kind. And there's the kind of air you put inside a basketball. Now, if you put too much air inside the basketball, it has too much bounce and you can't control it. Okay, and if you put in too little air, it might not bounce enough. Or it might not bounce at all. I would think that a consistent bounce would be pretty important to a basketball player. Let's find out. Playing behind me is Pamela McGee of the WNBA Sacramento Monarchs. So, uh, I'd say she knows a little bit about bouncing basketball. So, how'd you get started playing basketball? Well, it was in the fourth grade. I was pretty tall, and the coach asked me to come out for basketball. Well, what about schoolwork? Were you able to uh, keep up with your schoolwork while you played? Of course. My mom would never let me play unless I had good grades. <laughs> What about a bounce, a consistent bounce? Is that important to a basketball player? Most definitely, because basketball is a game of rhythm. Uh huh. And if the ball is not consistent, then your rhythm's off. I see. So uh, every ball in your league, they uh, they almost have pretty much the same bounce. Yeah, definitely. I mean, how do they get every ball to bounce exactly the same? <laughs> Let's start by figuring out why a basketball bounces in the first place. Because it's filled with air. Yes, that's true, that's very true, but it's filled with a certain kind of air, a specific kind of air. Mike, what kind of air is it? Compressed air. Yes, yeah, very nice. A basketball is filled with compressed air. <laughs> ah, air is a gas. Yeah, and one of the differences between a gas and a solid is the space between the molecules. Now, this bowling ball here is a solid, and in a solid, the molecules are packed really close together. You can't squeeze them anymore. In a gas, like air, there's a lot of space between the molecules. Because of that space, we can squeeze the molecules tighter together. That's what we do when we put air into a balloon or a soda can or a basketball. We compress the air into that space. Now, when we compress air into a balloon, there's still space between the molecules. That's why we can squeeze it like this. When you compress a gas, the molecules want to expand back to their original state. That's just what gas molecules do. Push them, and they push back. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. A balloon popping is just all the air decompressing, the molecules expanding back to the way they were before we compressed them. Oh. Let's pretend this is a basketball, and I'm air. Because the covering of the ball is round, the air fills out in a round shape. That's the cool thing about a gas. It pushes out in every direction. 
look what happens when I drop this bowling ball. But look what happens when I drop the basketball. Because the covering is flexible, the ball changes shape, right? It flattens out against the floor. When it does that, the air molecules inside get compressed even more, and they want to push the ball back out to round. And it bounces. So that's why a basketball bounces and a bowling ball doesn't. But what about a watermelon? <laughs> When we talk about something bouncing, we're talking about collision. When I drop a basketball, it collides with the floor. It bounces. When I drop a bowling ball, it also collides with the floor. It hardly bounces. These are two different types of collisions, elastic and inelastic. When the bowling ball hits the floor, it stops. We call this an inelastic collision because there's almost no kinetic energy left. It's all been transferred to heat. The ball stops moving. The basketball is an elastic collision because after it hits the floor, there's still some kinetic energy left. It keeps moving. Try hitting a hammer against something hard and solid for a while. You'll feel that the head ooh, ow, gets very hot. The kinetic energy has been converted to heat energy because the collision is inelastic. Everybody knows that a bowling ball doesn't bounce. Yes, but now you know why. So a basketball bounces because the air inside gets compressed. That's right, that's right. But the big question is, how do they make sure the bounce is consistent from one ball to the next? They fill every ball with the same amount of air? Okay, that sounds like a good idea, but how do we make sure every ball has the same amount? You could use an air pressure gauge, like on a tire. Let's try it. We measure air pressure in pounds per square inch, PSI. That's the force that the air is pushing out with. And uh, we can measure that force with a meter that looks like this. That way, I can get an equal PSI in all of these basketballs. Now, I'm going to fill each ball to exactly 8 PSI eight pounds per square inch. Now, I know that's the regulation air pressure because uh, it says so right here in the ball. Okay, so all these balls back here have been filled with exactly the same air pressure, so they should all bounce exactly the same, right? Well, let's see what happens. Okay, guys, let them drop. Hmm, that didn't seem to work out quite right. Let's watch it again in slow-mo. So the balls all have the same amount of air, but they all bounce to different heights. How come? Well, maybe the lining of the ball is different in each ball. Maybe one's just a little thicker, thinner than the other one. Yeah. The temperature might affect it, too. Yeah, that's all true. That's all true. So which ball bounced to the right height? So what's the right height supposed to be? Yeah, how do we know how high the ball is supposed to bounce? I don't know. Perhaps we should ask a professional. It says here that a ball dropped from a height of six feet measured to the bottom of the ball must rebound to a height at the top of the ball, not less than 49 inches and not more than 54 inches. Oh, I get it. So it's not the air pressure that's regulated, it's the height of the bounce. Right. And that makes sense because in basketball, it's the bounce that's important. Right, and the bounce is determined by the air pressure. In physics, there's a way to define bounciness. It's called the coefficient of restitution. Now, that sounds pretty complicated, but it's not. I promise. Uh, ah, coefficient just means a number that measures the way something's going to do something. Like uh, if you buy 15 sunblock. 15 is sort of like the coefficient of the sunblock. Ah, ah, restitution. Ah. <laughs> restitution is like restore or give back. See, when I squish up the hat and let it go, it restores to its original shape. So coefficient of restitution just means the number that measures the restoring force of the ball. The same force that makes it bounce. It's bouncing it. So, fellas, what are we going to do? We're going to drop the ball from a height of six feet, measure at the bottom of the ball. OK? And I'll measure how high it bounces at the top of the ball. Well, that sounds simple. Let's do it. OK, and what do we get? It bounced 60 inches. Ooh, that's a little too much, a little too bouncy. So what are we going to do? Take a little air out to make it less bouncy. Sounds good. <sighs> OK, so what do we get? 
52 inches. Hey, that's between 49 and 54. This ball has regulation bounciness. It is an officially bouncy ball. This ball is worthy of the WNBA. We drop the ball from a height of 72 inches. The top of the ball bounced to 52 inches. But to keep things consistent, we'll take the measurement from the bottom of the ball, 42.5 inches. Now we'll put all those numbers into an equation that looks like this. Now, don't change the channel because this is so simple. You just take the height the ball bounced to, divided by the height we dropped it from. Then you take the square root of that number and you get the coefficient of restitution. Now that gives us a number that defines the bounciness of the ball. The coefficient of restitution is 0.77. Now, if I wanted a little bouncier ball, I can legally ask for 0 0.80. Now, uh, you know what? I think I'll stick with my good old 0.76. Whoa! Hey! OK, so fellas, what did we learn today? Dominic. That a basketball bounces because of the air compressed inside it? Very good. And we can measure with bouncing this ball. The coefficient of restitution. And that they can make all basketballs bounce the same by making sure they have the same coefficient of restitution. Correct. You can do that by measuring and adding or subtracting air. OK, very good. I think you guys all got it. So we, uh, should we hoop it up? Let's hoop it up! We hope you've enjoyed ESPN Sports Figures. Until next time, keep your brain in the game. I'm Brian Kenny. Thanks for watching. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or lots of other fun stuff, visit our website at sportsfigures.espn.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in the sports. Sports figures, put your brain in the game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.